All right, I'm going to show you how to create a Konami code for your game. So if you want to put in kind of a uh, little Easter egg using the Konami code, I'm going to show you how to do that here in Game Lab. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an animation for my background just so people know what they're actually looking at. This should be 400 by 400, so I'm going to resize this so it takes up the whole background. And we'll resize it. Uh, we'll just fill the, the back and then we'll just draw with a white pencil here. Um, and we'll just tell everybody what the Konami code is. So and it's going to be up. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and then we're just going to do, instead of start, we're just going to have a click from our mouse. So it's going to say Konami code, just like that on our screen. Hopefully it'll look good. Um, so Konami code background, perfect on that. Uh, we will set a new animation. And we'll set it to 400. We'll fill that and we'll just do a red to show that. Um, so that you can access it. I'm going to go to block mode. Just uh, Many of you are probably comfortable with that. So I'm going to add a background sprite. Uh, I'm going to draw an animation for that background. And I'm going to set it to Konami code. And then I'm going to draw sprites. And again, I usually like to write some code, test some code, write some code, test some code. Uh, it's a good habit to get in so you can check your work as you go. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to create a variable that's called code. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through my process here. But I'm going to say that every time I press one of these particular buttons, it's going to add or it's going to change the code value. Um, and then that way I can check the code value against what the next button press should be. So that's really all I'm going to be looking for in this um, one big if statement. Um, so inside of my draw loop, I'm going to be looking for a bunch of if key downs. So the first key down that I'm going to look for is I'm going to do a key went down. Again, I'm looking for the transition of the key. And the first one is going to be my up arrow. And when the key goes down, I'm going to now reset my code to the value of 1. So if I run this, and again, over here in the debug section, I can put in code. And it will then look at my variable code. And if I press my up button, you can see the code went to 1. Um, and if I press it again, nothing happens. Because, it, um, again, it always sets it to 1. So that worked the way I wanted. So now what I want to do is I want to check another if statement. So I'm going to go to text mode because for me copying and pasting is a lot easier from this mode. Um, and my next is an up and this one I want to go to two. And I'm going to run this and now I'm going to push the up button one time. Now you can't see this but you got to trust me I push it one time and look what happened. It actually registers two, and I pressed it once. Um, the reason is, is because it is holding the value. This function like holds the value of the keystroke, and then it checks it after it does the draw sprite, and it re-goes through this loop, and it checks the value again. So it actually says, yep, key is a different value 
and it says, yep, key is a different value, and it sets code to 2 before it draws the sprite and goes through that draw loop again. So this is where you have to kind of insert an AND Boolean operator. So we want this to go to code 1 when the up button is pressed and the code value is equal to 0. And then we want this one to go to 2 when the up button is pressed and code is equal equal to 1. So now let's check and try this code. So now when I press the up button one time, it went to 2 again because it's the same reason. It does this. This is true, and this is true now, so it goes right to here. So we actually have to put this as an else if value, or an else if condition. Now the first time through, it's only going to allow you to do this one, draw sprites, come back through. And the second time through, it's only going to allow you to do one of these again. So the second time through, because code is now 1, it will only allow you to do this section. So now when I run it, we'll notice that when I press up, code is now 1, and I press it again, and now code is 2. And if I keep pressing it, nothing happens. If I click down or any of the other buttons, nothing happens. So hopefully you kind of get the idea now that this is the pattern that we're going to follow. So essentially, I can copy and paste this pattern And now I can just change some values. So this is going to be down. This is going to be code 2. This is going to go to code 3. This will be a down. This will be a code 3. And this will be a code 4. And now this is going to be left. This will be a code 4. This is a code 5. This will be right. Be code five. This will be code six. So now I'm going to stop there and I'm going to check. So again, once you get a couple things done, do a little bit more, check and see if it works. So let's let's try it. So if I press up, up, down, down, left, right, and I can see that my code went to six. Now I'm going to try a different code. So I'm going to go up, down, down, right, left, up, right down, down, right, left, right. Oh, you see the issue. I can actually get to code 6 by just randomly button mashing. So watch this. I'm going to button mash on this one. So I'm just going to take all four of my values and I'm just going to hit them all. And look, I got to 6. And I just was, I mean, I'm just literally randomly, if you do it on your own computer, just pushing all of them at kind of the same time. Um, I wonder if I could just push them all at the same time six times. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, basically you just button mash all of them at the same time, and you get this this value. So that's what we don't want. We'll get we'll fix that here in a minute. But let's just finish up this. We're going to do another left, right, left, right. So I'm going to copy these two lines and paste that, and just change these numbers. This is now six. This is seven. And this is seven. And this is eight. And then hopefully you see kind of the pattern. We're going to do now a B key and an A key, and this is 8 and 9, and now this is 9 and 10. And the last thing we want to do is, so we don't need two of these, the last one that we want to do is not a key down, we want to do mouse went down. All right, so we want a mouse went down here. Kind of messed up there for me, but mouse went down left button and code is 10. And now, what do we want to check, or what do we want to do here at this point? If we've clicked and we've gotten to code 10, we want our sprite to change our anim or our sprite to change animation here. So our background. is now going to go to, let's go back to show blocks. Again, I don't, off the top of my head, access BG. There we go. That's what I called that one. All right, so let's try it. 
Again, follow along with the code number here. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. And now I should be able to click. And there it is. Showed that it went to that particular one. Now, if I reset, go to that animation, let's see what the size is. Oh, it's 100, 100. So let's make this 400. Resize our canvas content. And go back to our code, rerun it. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, click. And there we go. Now, you're saying, hey, if I just button mash, you know, I can button mash to get to the 8, and then I can just button mash over here and get to 10, and now I can click. So that's no real Konami code. You're making this step up. Well, here's where you need to put in the other conditions that are occurring. So this is kind of the fun part, in my opinion. So now you have another else if. So what are the conditions that you don't want to have um, for your keys? So if you think about it, if you press the up key any time other than the first or second stroke, keystrokes, you want it to basically take the code back to zero. So I'm going to start there. So I'm going to say if, if key went down up, and I'm going to do this guy, I'm going to copy this right here. So if our, if our up key went down and the code was not equal to zero, Okay, because it's got to be equal to zero for that one, or one. So I'm going to use the OR operator, which is double vertical line. It's right above the enter key, shift and enter. Code is not equal to one, and I have to put these in parentheses. Now, this is where you have to get pretty good at Boolean operators um, and understanding kind of the logic of a Boolean operator. But I'm going to put code equal 13 just so that you can see that, okay, this does something different than if it does if it starts off at zero. So what this is saying is that the key went, if the up key went down, which this is all going to register, but the code, so and the code is not a zero or a one. So if it's a zero or one, it's going to then go into these one of these two. But if it's not a zero or a one, it's going to check in here and it's going to set code to 13 so we know that we pushed it at the wrong time. So let's try it. Uh, it's going to give us a comparison that we should do um, just like we did up here and a triple equal. Triple equals are a way in JavaScript to be more specific with, um, so it knows it's an integer zero instead of um, like a, a character or a string zero. We're just going to not worry about those warnings actually. Um, but here we go. We've got up, up, down, down. Now I'm going to push the up button. Watch what happens. It goes to 13. So it was not in the right order. Let's try three ups. Up, up, and then up goes to 13. So anytime I press the up button now in the wrong order, just the up button. So like if I'm doing left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right here, nothing happens. If I push down, down, again, I can button mash with the bottom ones. But if I hit that up button, it'll go to 13. So essentially, I've now taken out the up button from the proper sequence okay I need to do this now for every key on my keyboard bear with me it's not that bad so so I've gone ahead and done this for a lot of keys on the keyboard so you can see again I added down left right B a and again whenever down down is pressed during the second and third codes four and six for left five and seven for right B is eight a is nine but now look what I did here if the mouse moves and the code is not 10, then it, everything gets reset back to 0 now. I changed that from a 13 to a 0, because if I left it at 13 any time I moved the mouse, that, uh, that value code would go to 13, and I couldn't get it back. But right now, I can go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, click on it, and now can enter my game. Um, if I do up, up, down, 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 it goes back to 0. If I do like up and I move the mouse, it goes back to zero. If I do up, up, right, or up, up, left, down, down, left, right, and I hit Q, it goes back to zero. So you can add all the rest of the keyboard keys right after this, again, as OR statements. And this now 
is how you create your Konami code. You can do whatever you want after that. You can make this a fun